here's your heads up to these one of these bonus type things in this mad mad world it's a metaphor it's just a story a true story I'll read it so it's a bit clunky but the meaning's there but what I'd like you to do if you could just maybe close your eyes when you listen take a deep breath before I start and just relax and let my words just bathe your conscious and unconscious mind to let your unconscious mind begin to learn learn what it needs to learn so you can be safe so you can see the world through your clear eyes anyway have a listen now Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hi everyone, this is Paul. Paul Clough, Personal Development Unplugged. And in these mad, mad world, or this mad, mad world, I just thought, Today, I would read you a story. Oh, Cluffy, what's this about? Well, it's about... Well, you're going to have to find out, but it's a story from a lovely book, a lovely NLP book called Leaves Before the Wind. And it's a story, a metaphor. And it's by Dr. Diane Marshall. And I'm sure I've said this before, but I couldn't find it, so I thought I'd do it again. But this time, I'd probably just read it and notice what you notice about seeing the world differently. And it's a true story. And it's a true story about the leapfrog prince and the magic spectacles, so you know it's true. See, the leapfrog prince, all green and sweaty, was trudging down a narrow forest road. The competition had been rough, and the prince had not jumped his all-time best. His devoted companion, the flower-backed turtle, walked by his side. Nothing bothered the flower-backed turtle. Absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, the turtle was walking and listening, allowing the gentle forest murmurs, the sighs, to soothe him. He liked to feel the soft forest floor giving beneath his little feet, propelling him forward in its, well, it's an affectionate way, and deeper and deeper into the forest. It was as if they were floating safe with the sounds one foot following the other nothing to fear here soon soon the leap the leapfrog prince began to follow the strange reverie of the turtle moving gliding effortlessly deeper and deeper deeper into the green and brown woods Little by little, the prince was growing more and more relaxed. Each sound, each step, just seemed to soothe him. Finally, he sat down on that spongy ground, laid his head on the trunk of a lovely trusty tree, and fell into a deep, deep sleep. As the leapfrog prince slept soundly, dream voices began to whisper in his ears. You don't have to dream this dream if you don't want to. You don't have to listen to a single word I say. Edit this dream in a way that's just right for you. Take only what you need. In the time that is appropriate for you. In the way that is yours. And something in the leapfrog prince decided to dream on in vivid and varying colours and textures. The sounds of the dream were as clear as a crystal clinking on crystal. The frog, the frog body of the prince was vibrant with the subtle movements of the dream. Suddenly the flower-backed turtle appeared in his vision, standing just on the edge of a deep, serene pool. With a delicate motion of his turtle head, he beckoned the prince to join him at the edge of the pool. Then down they both dove, eyes open and peering into the motionless depths. 
the flower-backed turtle swam towards a strange underwater grotto, and the prince, readying his courage, followed him through the opening and inside the thick walls. All at once, the grotto opened into a cool cavern where there was, there was air to breathe and soft cushiony ledge to sit on. This is the waiting place, said the flowerback turtle. Here you must prepare to meet the siren below the pond. She will help you with the leapfrog competition. You can trust the siren below the pond. And after those words, the flowerback turtle dove once again into that deep, clear water, diving deeper and deeper, effortlessly. The prince obediently followed, summoning, summoning his courage as he dove. All at once, a large wooden door appeared in f off to the right, and as they swam closer, the door opened, and the changing water, underwater pressures, generally sucked them in. The leapfrog prince and the flowerback turtle found themselves unhurt and only slightly uncomfortable on the wet marble floor. Obviously, this was where the siren below the pond lived. Suddenly, foot footprints or footsteps echoed in the distance. Now getting closer, little by little. Now the eerie swish of a gauzy clothing and the siren below the pond shimmered before the leapfrog prince and the flowerback turtle. She said not a word. There was only a brief flash of recognition and acceptance across the fragile face. She extended her hand to the leapfrog prince and led him down a long quiet hall. Soon a black foreboding gate blocked their way. But the siren below the deep sang one silvery note and the gate opened with a mournful creak. Once across the threshold, the three were surrounded by a room filled of treasures, ornate music boxes, ancient instruments inlaid with jewels and thousands of beautiful leather bags, their contents hidden from view. With a commanding and articulated voice, the siren of the deep below the pond spoke to the print, the leapfrog prince. Inside any of these leather bags is tears, and inside each tear is a pair of spectacles. Return to your land and join the touring Master Leap competition. There are three events to, the, to occur over the next month. Wear the spectacles I offer you in succession, top to bottom. I will appear to you when you have finished this task. And the leapfrog prince gasped. <gasps> For the master leap competition seemed way over his head. The flowerback turtle shot him a meaningful look and that said, Just try it. It'll be fine. So the leapfrog prince sighed a sigh of resignation. <sighs> and with tentative movements, made his way out of the room. To the waiting place, out of the pool. To the trunk of that trusty, trusty tree. When the leapfrog prince awoke from this dream, he was in a most agitated state. He screamed at the flowerback turtle and stopped on the ground. Absolutely nothing bothered the flowerback turtle. He just looked at the leapfrog prince and with a little smirk of disgust, handed him the leather bag. The siren below the pond has spoken, he said. Now it was the day of the first master leap competition. The sky was blue and the air was clear. The leapfrog prince began to prepare himself in the usual way, stretching his long leg muscles and his delicately curved back. About 15 minutes before his round of leaping, he cautiously drew the first pair of spectacles. The rims were gold and the lenses were green, and as soon as the leapfrog prince put them on, everything seemed different. The competition suddenly looked scrawny, barely able to jump at all. The judges appeared to definitely be in favour of the leapfrog prince, and the crowd seemed to definitely be in favour of the leapfrog frog prince too. They would cheer him, and only him. The leapfrog prince scanned his body and quickly concluded that he felt like Hercules. The flowerback turtle in his calm, and was calm, 
and watched quietly as the leapfrog prince began his round of jumping. He came in last place. He didn't believe it until he saw it on the score sheet. By the time the second competition came round, the leapfrog prince had some curiosity about the upcoming day. He prepared as always and then took the second pair of spectacles out of the leather bag. This time the spectacles were silver and grey. As soon as the prince put them on, his perception began to shift drastically. The day was hot, airless and muggy. The other frog competitors looked like fierce leaping gods. The leapfrog prince wanted to sabotage them all, well just for a while. But then he ended up just sitting on the track and feel, well just feeling helpless. He wanted to quit and go home. The judges seemed to be in a terrible snit about something and they were writing angrily. The crowd was petulant and sneering. Even the flower-backed turtle seemed a little strange. The prince thought he was bored and impatient. He tried to loosen up and he couldn't catch his breath and his body was racked with tension. The leapfrog prince jumped all time badly worst. When the day came from the third competition, the leapfrog prince was only very, or was not very excited, and his previous curiosity has waned. He did not bother to prepare himself before the event, but he did reach into the leather bag and, at the last minute to retrieve the last pair of spectacles. These had no rims. The lenses were clear, and they felt weightless. They felt weightless on his frog nose. The leapfrog prince couldn't believe the change in his perception. The sky was blue, but there was a storm brewing on the west. As, he soon, as soon as he noticed the weather, his body made a, a rapid adjustment. His breathing was easier and his legs began to relax. The leapfrog prince looked at the, the other frog competitions or competitors. Some were hard and muscled and mean looking. Others were podgy and meek. And some were absolutely magnificent. Again, his body began to magically regulate. The leapfrog prince was mystified, but he just felt better, lighter. Turning slowly, he peered at the judges. One seemed to be daydreaming or having a daytime nightmare. He seemed to be very uncomfortable. One judge was highly interested and seemed to enjoy watching and writing. The last judge was looking at the girls up in the crowd. Abruptly, the leapfrog prince felt his body and, the, and senses making minute corrections on all, all by itself. And when he looked at the crowd, each individual person seemed to be unique. All were doing slightly different things. Some of these would have bothered him before, but now his body shifted. His heart rate had modified. His breathing was deep. And his muscles felt relaxed and responsive. When the leapfrog prince looked at the flowerback turtle, he noticed the most amazing lines of wisdom on the face. And there was even a hint of tears in the turtle's eyes. The leapfrog prince knew that he had a very caring companion. And his body and senses now made their last correction in one ripping spasm. He was ready to jump. There were several quantum leaps in this round and he jumped for all he could muster to his all-time best. There was a three-way tie for first place and Leapfrog Prince was in it. Again, the Leapfrog Prince and the Flowerback Turtle began to walk. Walk on that narrow forest road. The Prince had no trouble entering the reverie of the turtle. Drifting, listening to the forest chirps and flutters, walking effortlessly around, floating, relaxing, enjoying the safety, now stopping, now sleeping, now dreaming. And it wasn't long before the siren be below the pond appeared, filmy, delicate and fragile. Her voice in the most caressing whisper said, well done. My fine leapfrog prince, may you always be blessed with a companion like the flowerback turtle. 
you may keep this fine leather bag and the spectacles enclosed within, within those three tiers. I have thousands of leather bags with similar contents for all who dive to find me. Perhaps we will bring the next young leaping frog. And I don't know what we're seeing in the world this very moment. I've got my thoughts on one or two things I'm seeing. And sometimes I have to think. What am I perceiving? What is the focus of my attention? What are the, the filters that I'm using right now? And if I had to, and if I could, could I put on the right set of, say, spectacles with the right filters on to see what's the right thing to do? Anyway, that's the story. I think it's a great story. I love it, I love it, I love it. You might think it's absolutely bonky, but you might just learn something unconsciously. Anyway, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.